right? It's titled Showers of Blessings. Showers of blessings for you and for me. Just look up and see. He will send down what we need. All we have to do is believe. Believe in his birth, amen. Believe in his death and believe in his resurrection. Amen. And he's coming soon to earth again, amen? amen. Not as a slave who died on the cross, but a holy king to bring in the lost. This year is the year for us to see the fire of the Holy Spirit, amen? And miracles from the King of Glory. So we need to get serious and let go of ourselves, meaning to be more caring and loving and sharing God's only Son to everyone. If you want a copy, I do have copies. I'll put them out there. God bless you, everyone. Again, good evening and Happy New Year. For those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Barbara Perry and I oversee the prophetic ministry here at Praise Tabernacle. And uh, we have a prophetic class that meets the first Wednesday of every month at 6.30 in the Family Life Center and anybody's welcome to come that would like to learn more about the prophetic. And I have asked the class to submit to me words that the Lord has given them for the year 2015, and they have sent them in, and I have put together a summary of them. Uh, but before I do that, I want to thank Ron and Taylor for a beautiful time of worship. And I felt that, um, you know how uh, when you go to the fireworks, the fireworks are all in those tin cans and then they shoot them out of them. And the, the, the tin cans are like the um, foundation. Well, Ron, you're the foundation and Taylor, you're the firecrackers. <laughs> and with your, what you've done, what you did tonight was stir up the atmosphere with the things that the Lord gives you to say and, and proclaim to him. And it was just a really nice time of worship. And I want to encourage you because God has things for you to do. And he said for me to encourage you to attend this Promised Land Equipping Center School on 8.30 Sunday mornings. Okay? You know, because every one of the giftings that we have has to be undergirded with our knowledge of the word and that's what keeps you grounded and safe and I think you know if there's any way possible you have to miss the first service but still it's you need to get the word in in you and get grounded and I'm not saying you don't already have some but it just you need you need to be there <clears throat> um, you know, Pastor Josh said, oh, we want to know what we're going to do and all the exciting things. But you know what? It's not exciting. It's only exciting when you put it into practice. And uh, when you're building a, a, if you ever put a puzzle together and you put all these pieces together and it's not really beautiful until it's all together. And God is putting our puzzle together here at Praise Tabernacle. Last year, if you remember, um, the words dealt with, um, they seemed to fit right in with the scriptures that were speaking about Israel crossing the Jordan River and preparing them to begin to take the promised land. And they were to remember what God had done for them and who they were in Christ, making sure that they walked in the holiness that is available to them through Christ. And they had to learn, they were beginning to learn to walk by faith and not by sight, in unity, listening quickly and obeying the way, uh, listening to and quickly obeying the word of the Lord. And these instructions have not changed, they have only been added to. Well, you know, remember what God has done for you. That's not very exciting, like you're going to save 5,000 people at the next meeting you have. Or, <clears throat> walk in holiness. Well, that's an, always an exciting one. You know, it's not easy. And the more you walk with the Lord, I don't want to say how to say it, but the more narrow his holiness becomes, 
the more, you know, you just, it's less and less that you should be doing. And we have to learn to walk by faith and not by sight and listening to, they all sound like good things, but none of them are exciting as such. You know, we all want these words that say, a blind man is going to be healed and somebody's going to go in that deaf ministry and re restore their hearing. Well, that could happen. I'm not saying that God couldn't do that. But what God really is interested in is our hearts and the kingdom, that we advance the kingdom. So I don't think it's any coincidence that the Promised Land Equipping Center has started up again because he is equipping us to go in and take the Promised Land, just as we saw with Israel crossing the Jordan. And the words for this year fit right in that. Okay, but the, the, the words that I got can almost all be expressed in either one word or two word summaries. The first word would be love. Um, just as Israel had a base camp at Gilgal, our base camp is, what is our base camp? Praise Tabernacle. And I saw, this was a word that I had, I saw a pennant or a banner flying from the top of the dome with the word love written on it. And I felt that the Lord said that this is a, to be our characteristic signature, our, rather, our signature characteristic here in this church, that we are to be known as a church full of love. Well, they also, in castles and, and places like that, when the flag was flying, what did it mean? The king was in residence. The flag is flying in 2015, and so what's it going to mean for Praise Tabernacle? The king is in residence. That, that is exciting. I think that's exciting. Uh, so in 2015, we're going to experience an abiding presence of the Lord. Not that he's going to be there one week. I mean, he's always here. You know what I mean. But there's going to be an abiding presence, not a, a, an ebb and flow as much. And as the word says, his banner over us is love. And the word also says, they, they, will, they will know you are my disciples by the love you have one for another. This is the love. This is not, I love you. It's not, oh, you look so pretty today. That, oh, that could be part of it. We're supposed to build one another up. But this is love as found in 1 Corinthians 13, which is an action word. Um, the one that always stands out to me is, love does not take into account a wrong suffered. We suffer wrongs. All of us do. I'm sorry, but we have to learn to not take it in account, not pick up the offense, which is a whole other teaching, but that there is a lot of picking up of offenses that goes on in the body of Christ. And we're going to have to learn to get over it. That, that was my wise sage counsel to most people I talked to in 2014, get over it. <coughs> this year, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> this year it's going to be, it is what it is because it is what it is. So we're to put, a, oh, thank you. <laughs> I just, excuse me while I take a candy. Oh, a cough drop. I have one, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> oh, look at this, look at the love. <laughs> oh, thank you. We have to begin to put Jesus first. I mean, yeah, put others first just as Jesus did. The second word is in training. Psalm 144.1 says, Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. We've had a lot of words about being in boot camp. But you know, when, when you're in boot camp, you don't go off to war yet. You, might, you go out and you do some, maybe you do practice battles and what have you, but you don't go out for the big battle. So we're in this training, and we're being trained for the battle. And the words came forth that we're moving into a more intense training for the taking of the land for the kingdom. Our strategies are being revised. 
Further on, you're going to see, one of the words we got was newness. We're going to start doing things in a new way. Not that there's anything wrong with the old and not that we won't still do the old, but there are going to be new strategies that the Lord is going to put before us as to how to go out and take the land. And we also must be prepared to care for the prisoners of war we set free. You know, we can't just go out and lead people to the Lord and leave them. We have to take care of them. And that's where a lot of the love is going to have to come in. And a giving of ourselves because it, I don't know how many of you were here the year we brought in a whole bunch of kids from, from Atlantic City, I guess they were. It was an experience. Well, we're going to have a lot of that. You know, a lot of uh, our people didn't handle it really well. And we're going to have to learn how to handle it. Well, we have to learn how to what to expect and how to minister to these people that, that God brings to us. Because they are prisoners of war. And if we set them free, we're going to have to set them free all the way. The intensity is increasing. And we must be ready to receive more and give more and get more. God is ready. Are you? Are you ready? It's going to cost you. It's going to cost every one of us. If we get this revival, it's going to cost every one of us. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about self and time. Um, so be ready. When the Israelites crossed over into the promised land, they had to fight for every inch of it. The devil is not going to give up easy when we go out in there to take the land. He does not want us to win, you know? So we're gonna have to fight for every inch. But we read the, at least I've read the back of the book. And who wins? Amen. All right, holy hearing. We need to fine tune our hearing so that when we hear him, we, quick, we hear him quickly, clearly, and are ready to act on his word immediately and then obey. This is not easy either because you hear something and it's like, ooh, or say the elders come up with a decision. They feel they've heard from the Lord and I believe we have godly elders that pray and listen to the Lord. And they say, this is what we feel the Lord told us to do. And immediately the buzzing starts. Well, I don't think that's God. Do, oh, do, could that really? We shouldn't be doing that. We should be doing this and that and the other thing. Be aware of how God might talk to us. Not might, he will talk to us through our leadership. And we have to be ready to act and obey them with a good heart, without the complaining and grumbling. Um, Roger's good at saying, you know, when a bunch of ladies get together, you hear a lot of, and he's saying, is that grumbling I hear? <laughs> is that murmuring? <laughs> no, Roger, it's just discussion. But it really is sometimes complaining and grumbling. Now Achan heard, we're back into the Israelite uh, crossing the Jordan. Achan heard the word of the Lord, but he didn't obey it. And the whole nation of Israel was affected. When the word comes forth, be careful that you don't become an Achan. Hear the word and be obedient to the leadership in the plans. The whole nation was affected. You know, the whole, we are part of a body. We sometimes think we're an island unto ourselves or what have you. We're a very individualistic country. And we've been brought up to think individually. And we have to think corporately. That's been Linda's mantra for years. Corporate, corporate, corporate. What you do affects the whole body. I don't care how hidden it is. I don't care how small it is, it affects the whole body. And I think we have to become more aware of that. <clears throat> the first time that the Israelites went up to Ai because of the sin of Achan, and also if you read, nowhere did Joshua ask the Lord, they just went up in presumption. And you know that's so easy to do, so we need to be careful that if we go out and we have one victory, we think, oh boy, we got, we got it down pat now. We know how to minister to these people. And you go out and what happened that first time they went up to AI? 
They got chased. They got defeated. It was humiliating. I don't want to be humiliated and I don't want my church to be humiliated. So we need to be careful to listen and obey and our leaders need to be careful to always be seeking the Lord, listening to the Lord's voice. But the, the, the next time they went up after God told them, they were successful. So we must only do what we hear from the Father. Now hunger, and I thought this was um, an interesting word. Somebody said there's going to be a new hunger and I read and I realized that when they crossed over the Jordan, the manna ceased. Their diet changed. Okay? So God is going to be stirring up a holy hunger that we haven't had before. We're not going to be satisfied with just the milk. We're going to want the meat of the word. And as we eat the bread of heaven, we will have a deeper understanding of his word and plans. And we will see the glory fall more often to, to a greater extent with an increase in the prophetic gifts. It's, I, we all want to see the prophetic gifts increase. The hard part is we're only allowed to do three his service. <laughs> you know? So we have to also respect Pastor Steve in that too because we're being obedient to the word. And if you happen to have the fourth prophetic word and you don't get to give it, do not pick up an offense. Type it up and send it to me. <laughs> That's my mantra to all my people. Type it up and send it to me. Email it to me. <clears throat> Perseverance. We all love that word. With passion, we are to push and press into the plans and purposes of God, and we will see them accomplished through perseverance and the power of prayer. Like I said, when they tried at AI the first time, they failed, but they didn't stop. They were successful. They persevered and they pressed in. And so many people are so <sighs> immature, let's say. If you have heard from God from something, and you feel that he's told you to do it, and you attempted it, and it doesn't work, there's either one of two things. You didn't really hear from God, or you didn't do it in the correct way. We need to persevere if it doesn't work out. Find out why. Why that didn't work, and go from there. Uh, failure should not stop us. Failure should just um, stir us up to get back up, and push, and persevere. What was that word that they should have used? Um, Press into the plans of God. Oh, another favorite word that came forth was patience. Wait for God to move and show the way. We all want to get out there and do all of this stuff. Well, you know, if you're a prize fighter, and you, you want to get out there and fight that fight and win the prize. But you don't want to train. If you don't train, you're not going to be very successful in that fight. So we need to be patient and wait for God to move and show the way all the time being in training at the Promised Land Equipping Center. <laughs> you know, it's like Roger's teaching a few classes uh, this first thing and I, I, they gave me some to teach but it's not till January of 2016 so I don't have to worry about it yet. But it starts at 8.30. And if you know me, that is not, that, that we're, I'm going to have to die to self here. I don't like 8.30. And some of you don't either. But if I can do it, you can do it. So, I expect to see you there. Including you, Lee. <laughs> oh, another good word. Oh, but anyway, there's a reason and a purpose for everything. There's a reason why God sometimes delays. There's a reason why it doesn't go just the way you want it to the first time or the second time or the third time. He is training us. Purity. The word came forth, my righteousness will shake and break until purity comes forth. If you're in a period of shaking and breaking, God's trying to bring forth purity in you. Embrace it. Embrace it. Say, what, what can I do to move through this to bring forth your character, Lord? God says, I'm calling my people to be holy. I am looking for a pure kingdom people who will remain in my heart and not depart from my ways. And that not depart from my ways means 24-7. 24-7. 
marching orders, all from Isaiah 61. Preach the good news. We all know these, but this is what we're to do. Preach the good news. Heal the brokenhearted. Proclaim liberty to the captives. Open the prisons of those who are bound. Proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Proclaim the day of vengeance of our God. Comfort all those who mourn. Give them beauty for ashes, <clears throat> the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Again, before we can preach the good news, we have to know what it is. Before we can heal the brokenhearted, we have to know how God does them, and so forth. And where are you going to learn how to do these things? Promised land equipping center. <laughs> See, I got a commission. <laughs> I'm storing up treasure in heaven. Um, but all of these things deal with reaching out and meeting the needs of others, not ourselves. Here in America, we are very much me-oriented, and we need to have our minds renewed in this area. Instead of me and mine, we need to focus on the kingdom of God. And I have to tell you, this, this is a big thing in my life. My thoughts, when I, it's not me and mine so much as me, but my vision is always just praise tabernacle. I have a very hard time lifting it up to take in the kingdom of God. And I'm working on it. I want to be kingdom minded instead of praise tabernacle minded. And so all of you, you we all need to be kingdom minded and find out what that really means. Here was an interesting word that came forth, newness. Not renewal, but total newness. New love, new training, new ears to hear, new hunger, new purity, new territory, new strategies, new marching orders, new purpose, new level of relationship with him, a new revelation of Jesus as the Lord of hosts or the captain of the Lord's hosts. Joshua, when he was getting ready to go out into battle, there appeared before him, Jesus. Uh, it's an accepted thing. It was a theophany. We can expect to get a new revelation of Jesus, of who he is as we go, need to, as we go forward in this thing. Now the Israelites were slaves in Egypt, just as we were slaves in the world. And when they crossed the Red Sea, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years learning how to be free men. So when we got saved, we were set free from the world, and we have now, most of us has, have spent many years learning how to be free from the effects of our time in the world. It's amazing how <clears throat> all those things that happened to us when we were younger and not walking with the Lord still creep up and try to affect us. And we're learning how to be free. Now, and we're all in that stage, but when they crossed over the Jordan, they entered into another segment of life, and that was taking ground for the Lord. And that's where he's calling us to. We're, we're, yes, we're to continue to be, be, continue to be being, <laughs> set free from all the things that happened to us in the world, but we now need to shift our focus to taking ground for the Lord. And I, uh, <clears throat> Just as that took many years for them to take the ground, it's going to be a slow but steady process for us. When a battleship is going in one direction, it cannot turn on a dime. Turning is a slow process. It has to go, mm, it just doesn't go, mm, you know, it takes a long time to turn a battleship. And it's the same with the local church and the worldwide church. Uh, and God is turning us from being self-centered and looking to see what we can get from God. And he's wanting to turn us into his holy nation taking back his dominion here on earth. And it's, it's, it's like turning a big battleship. I mean, if there's only one of us, yeah, you could just go up, punch him in the mouth and turn him. But we've got a whole congregation <laughs> that we have to gently and lovingly and kindly and firmly turn into the kingdom mentality. Now, the, the, with closing, I want to say that worship did not come forth in the words that I received, but 
In the middle of all this, Joshua built an altar to the Lord, and I believe that worship will play a big part in this time of warfare. So, love, training, holy hearing, hunger, perseverance, patience, purity, marching orders, newness, and worship are all part of the turning us into the way of the Lord. And you can hear all of this and you can say, oh, that's nice, wasn't that edifying? Wasn't that interesting what she said? Or you can take it as God's word to you and begin to eat of it, begin to uh, digest it. Uh, and if you choose to eat, your life will become more and more fulfilling as you walk in God's path for you. Okay, that's basically it. Uh, these things will be on the website within the next couple of days along with the words that they were taken from so you can look at the whole thing anytime you want to and uh, just I, is there anybody here from my prophetic class that has something they want to say that they didn't get a chance to send to me and a word for 2015 no okay they, somebody will come up and say, oh, I just didn't want to get up there. If you have a word, send it, type it up and send it to me. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. Wasn't that powerful? brought a lot of confirmation to me, and I'm just going to expand a little bit on some of those words that Barbara received, and um, something, so am I up on top? Yes, we are. Praise God. You know, the Hebrew calendar New Year began in September, and so I've been, we've been having prophetic services since then in October, and we talked about the, this 2015 being the year of the open window. The year of the open window. So since that time, I've been meditating on what that actually looks like. Going more in depth on what, that, what, what, what does that really mean. And so I just keep picturing, next, next slide, I keep seeing my grandmother when I think of open window. That's my grandma. That's one of my favorite pictures of her. And she used to always look out the window. And she always had that look. She looked very worrisome. <laughs> But it was her, and the word that keeps ringing in my mind is introspective. And this is something that I'm not too often. Introspective. What does that mean? The process of examining your own thoughts or feelings. Well, maybe I am in a way, but I'm a very visionary, so I'm always trying to look way out there about taking the land. So everything Barbara was sharing about taking the land, that's all me. But God's actually telling me to focus less on taking the land and realize first it starts right here. And so I need to sit and look out the window and see what is already present and make sure that things are happening right here. Amen? Amen. So, next slide, a couple of things that go with that. The kingdom of God is where? It's within us. So, to access our heavenly resources, we need to learn the art of looking within us. How do we do this? First of all, going into 2015, we need to make sure that spending time alone with God is priority number one. It's not way down on the priority list. It's our first priority. That's the only way we're going to be able to access those resources. You know how much wisdom is inside of us? The wisdom that created the entire universe is within us. Every answer to every problem we face is here. We just got to learn how to tap into it. We got to learn how to listen to that voice within us. Amen? So we must refuse, going into this year, we must have this mentality. I refuse to do anything without first acknowledging God and hearing from him. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. We need to now learn to celebrate what God has already done. One thing I, because if you're a visionary, sometimes you see so far ahead, you don't see what's before you, and you miss out enjoying what you already got. God has already done great things. He's already given us so many things and sometimes we're not enjoying the season we're in because we're so much, I can't wait till winter's over. I can't wait till this cold is gone. 
You know what? There's something beautiful about every season. You know, when it's summer, it gets so hot, we can't wait till it's colder. So let's enjoy every season. Let's enjoy everything that God has brought into our lives. Let's make sure we enjoy the most important things, our spouse. That's our greatest gift on this earth, I believe, is our spouse or our partner in life. We can't make it without them. Next of all, our beautiful children, the fruit of our, of our spouse's womb. That, depending on which one's saying that. <laughs> so, and, and we also got to make sure that with what he's given us, how are we taking care of those things? We're asking God for more, but we're not taking care of what he's already given us. Are we being good stewards? Maybe our financial state of being is because of our lack of stewardship. You know, a lot of things in our life. Maybe God's not adding on to things because we've got to first take care of what he's already blessed us with. And then, it's a, then I also put, it's not time to look for another door. See, the seasons, the last, the prophetic word for 2014 was the year of the open door. We're no, we should no longer go into 2015 look for open doors. Most of us have gone into new, a new door. We have new things in our life. And so now, before looking any further, we just need to take care of those new things. We need to enjoy what now God's done. Okay, now going along with some of the words that the team gave, the first one is on love. So just some application to some of those words or some deeper application or some more application. By giving, this is where God's challenging me in the area of love. How can we love each other better? By giving greater support to our family, our friends, and our church. How do we support each other? Main thing is being there for each other. Amen. I have found that I have, sometimes I, 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 I'm, I stretch myself too thin and I'm not there for the people that are most important in my life. So this year I'm looking to pull back and be supportive of those who God has really called me to. And of course that's always family first, friends and then church. And through spending more time with those God has assigned us to. So spending more time with them. Also being observant as we spend more time with them, we're there. Guess what? Automatically we should be observing what each other's needs really are. And then we got to seek God how to meet those needs. Let's help each other. Let's encourage each other. You know, no matter how much I want to see things and take the land and all that kind of stuff, who am I going to take it with if... We're not all growing together and becoming strong together. We're God's army. One person can't take down the enemy by himself. We all must do it together. So we all just got to support each other and strengthen each other. When we see somebody weak and struggling, how, what good does it do to tear them down? To gossip and backbite about them. When they're going to affect us and where we can go in God. So the best thing to do is how can we help? I love people who look at the needs of our church and actually don't complain and talk about what the leadership's not doing, but they actually say, you know what, that's an area. Pastor Steve, Pastor Josh, can I help in this area? Because I see that it's a need. You know, I'm not, also, I'm not always the best administrator, so I've had people come up to me and say, can I administrate for you, such as a Joan Johnson? and others who are much better at administrating, I thank God for people like that. Amen. I have great administrators. And they make everything work. Amen. And now training. So we've talked a lot about the training, but we need to prepare ourselves to offer others better service. So how can we serve each other better? By being even more equipped to help each other. When we stop learning, what happens? We stop growing. We're never above learning until we're taken up. So let's increase our word intake. Again, be the student of the school of ministry. Holy hearing. I talked a little bit about this on, on Sunday, and we're going to go more in depth sometime this year, but it's to embrace silence and solitude. We live in a noisy world and a noisy culture. 
I loved sometimes, I miss those days when I lived in the islands. It was much quieter. We need a secret place where we are free from noise and interruptions and can give God our undivided attention. So we've got to ask ourselves, do we have a secret place? If you don't, get one. Again, sometimes it might be, you might be in a house, like my house sometimes, that there is no free place, but there is one free space all the time, and that is your bathroom. You can always go to the bathroom. If you take too long, hopefully there's another bathroom in the house. But there's a way to find, a, there's, there has to be a way to get alone and be with God, amen? amen. We got to make it happen because that's the most precious thing. It should be the most precious part of our day is that secret place. That's what we should long for each day. And then the holy hunger. Blessed are you who hunger now for you shall be filled. Encourage you, maybe, if you have not read through the Bible, make this year, if you have Bible I do, like many of us, the Bible apps have one-year Bible reading plans, or you can just get a specific Bible, or you can follow. There's many ways to get a Bible reading plan, but it's great to read the Word, to have more understanding of the Word. So I really encourage you to increase your intake of the Word of God. Make fasting a lifestyle so that spiritual hunger develops. This sounds, we're talking about hunger, then we're talking about fasting. So what we need to train our body is to hunger more for the things of the spirit than the things of the flesh. Fasting does that work in us. Uh, some of us uh, pastors in the area, South Jersey Revival Alliance, we're encouraging all the pastors to um, fast for the, starting this Sunday for 21 days. So I really uh, seek the Lord, how would God have you fast? What would he have you fast from? It doesn't have to just be food. One thing I'm going to do is try to fast from a lot of noise. I'm going to drive to work with the music off, even if it's worship. I'm going to spend more time in prayer without music. I'm going to watch very le little television. Only maybe sp certain shows with just my family. But on my own time, I'm going to just learn how to be quiet, how to be silent, how to embrace silence and solitude. Amen? Perseverance and patience. We need to face our battles no longer in our own strength, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to learn the art of waiting before responding. To always take a step back before taking a step forward. To wait upon the Lord so he can renew our strength, so that we can be empowered from above before we get in any kind of heated discussion. Amen? Amen? And purity, through deeper devotion, deeper purity supernaturally develops. So it's automatically, as we're, if we're going deeper in our relationship with God, purity comes. The closer we get to God, the more we have conviction. And the easier it is to say no to that which hurts the one we love. If we really love God, we don't want to hurt him. Intimacy produces purity. Purity. So that's just an automatic thing. If we go more intimate with God, if you're struggling with sin in any area, we all struggle in sin. No matter how, who we are, what title we have, we all struggle with sin. We're all capable of sinning because we have the flesh. And the only way to overcome sin is through deeper relationship with God. Greater intimacy produces greater purity. Amen. And marching orders. Until we have the heart of a servant... We will not receive instructions from God regarding ministry. It doesn't have to be hard to wait. You shouldn't have to wait for somebody to recognize you in order to minister. Because if God recognizes you, he will speak to you himself. Amen. And ministry is not just on a pulpit. Ministry is in everyday life, everywhere, all the time. And there's always plenty of opportunities to minister. The only reason we're not ministering is because maybe we're not hearing. And maybe because we're not hearing is because we don't have a heart of a servant. So we need the heart of a servant. Ministry is service. One thing I shared on, on um, Sunday was the importance of knowing our motivational gift. And it's not hard to notice that because it's something that we've been born with, basically. 
It's our natural thing that we're, your gift might be prophetic, it might be a teacher, it might be a helper, it might be an exhorter, it might be a giver, it might be a ruler, it might be mercy. And in, in one of those areas, find a place of service and you'll be ministering. Amen? Marching orders. You'll be where you need to be to receive the plan that God has for you. And then the, it also said, uh, the team also said, raised to walk in newness of life. God is going to renew the way we see that which he has given us. So as we're sitting like that picture of my grandmother and looking out, he's going to begin to renew our vision. We're going to get restored eyesight. We're going to learn how to see from above. We're going to see our job no longer as a way to make an income and a means of provision, but we're going to see our job as our ministry. This is kingdom mentality. Different way of approaching what we do. We're going to see our families and our homes as our ministry team and our sanctuary. Amen? Church is no longer just here, it's also in our home. And we're no longer waiting to get together with other church members to minister. Our family is now our ministry team as well. We're going to see our church as an equipping center and not just a place for fellowship and religious observance. Amen. And then worship. We need to become less reliant on corporate worship and more devoted to personal worship. I find that most likely people who complain about the worship are people who don't have much of worship personally. They're looking so much for it out elsewhere because they don't have it themselves. When we come together filled, when we come to church filled because we're worshipers in our life, we create a different atmosphere of the place we come in and it doesn't even, no matter who's leading worship, things happen. Glory of God is in the house. Amen? So we have to see ourselves now. We're the carriers of God's presence. If we want God to move in a church, we're not just relying on the worship team. Thank God for the worship team, but we are the worship team too. And we bring the glory. So we who, now, not we, maybe not me, but we, some of you, who are anointed, not that I'm not anointed, but and gifted in singing or playing instruments, need to pray about committing to be part of the worship team. So maybe we'll be adding some people to the worship team this year, as God has taken some out and sent them to different places. Pray about it. Step it up. Be committed. But the people who do worship are those who are committed. So it takes commitment, sacrifice. Amen. So if that is on your heart, step it up. Amen. Amen. And see Marianne. In the last slide there, it says, God's window of blessings is open to that which he has given and we have given in return. What does God bless? That which he's given us. He blesses it when we give it back to him. So when everything we are and everything we have is surrendered to him, the window is open and the blessings are coming in. Amen? Praise God. I'm going to pray right now. We're going to ask the prophetic team to come forward. And they're going to be available if you need specific individual words tonight that will help you in that direction that we've brought forth, then they'll be available here to pray with you. Yes. Uh, Valerie, uh, Lord asked me if she could just share something. Is this on? Yes. It's on. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. So um, I was asked to step up here and surprise two awesome people in our church, Pastor Josh oh. and Suzanne Crawford. Um, I don't know about you guys, but these two have been a major blessing in my life. So before we pray, I'm going to ask the two of them to come up here. 
Surprise. You can thank your wife. <laughs> You're really hard to surprise. So this was our best way to do it. So um, we did ask some of the people if they had any prophetic words or blessings that they wanted to speak to either one of them to come up and do that right now. The, Miss Suzanne here turned 60 on the 18th. <laughs> yes, I did. On the 18th. And jo Pastor Josh turned 40 on the 19th. So we were, this is a birthday surprise. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Anybody? Pastor Josh, I'm just hearing obedience, that because you've been obedient and you are pressing in with obedience, that you're gonna get a great big blessing. That as you're looking through that open window, the Lord is gonna respond and it's gonna be more than you're expecting. This is gonna be a year of new beginnings in a way like you've never seen. Like a lot of things that you've been dreaming about, the dreams are about to just manifest. You're gonna be stepping into something and you're gonna say, wow, how did that even happen? And it's just the Lord and that's how he does some things. Thank you. Good night, church. Praise God. I think I told you everything I had to tell you already, Pastor Josh. Happy birthday to both of you. And um, just for you, Suzanne, you're such an awesome person. A spiritual mother to me. Someone I respect and um, look up to a lot. Um, you're very close to my heart. <laughs> 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 oh, someone. <laughs> I can't say someone I look down to. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but you're, you're an awesome woman. And the Lord showed me that you've been thinking a lot lately. It's been a time in your life um, you, you've been weighing your options. And you've been asking the Lord. It's been a while now you've been asking the Lord. Um, but it, it's, it's, becoming, it's becoming a growing thing that you're asking the Lord more. Like, Lord, um, when is the time? Just give me the time and I will go. Just let me know the time, Lord. I want to know the time because I don't want to go. I don't want to make decisions without hearing from you. I don't want to step out without hearing from you. And I see you on your bedside asking the Lord, when is the time? When is the time? The Lord will show you. The Lord will give you a push. He'll give you a push to take the initiative. You'll see signs. The Lord said you will see signs. Because um, some people want to wait for like a physical thing to just happen. That will give them some instruction. But the Lord said no. There will be no physical thing that will happen to give you no instruction. The Lord said, I will give you a relief, a peace in your heart that will cause you to move. And that peace will overwhelm you so much that it will cause you to make decisions and set things in place that you're supposed to be setting in place already. The Lord said you're supposed to be putting things in place already. And, and the Lord said it's, it's time for shifting. It's time for shifting. And don't let people encourage you to move before you feel the peace. Because that could be very detrimental to where God wants to bring you. You could go before your time and things will not work out and you will start blaming the Lord and holding an offense in your heart. So to avoid the offense, to avoid the hurt, wait for the Lord to give you the peace and the push. Praise God. Great. Right, praise God. Well, I'll pray, and then if we could have uh, maybe a song or two to close and also open up the uh, altar for prayer.
prophetic ministry, if you need a word, whatever prayer you need, um, you can feel free to come up at that time. And for those who have to go, go and enjoy the rest of this 2014. We will be continuing the service. We'll be open for prayer afterwards. We're going to pray all through the night. So if you'd like to stay with us all night long and just pray and seek God, you can do so. The church is open all night long. Praise God. So Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord God, for those marching orders that we've received. We thank you, Father God, that we don't just take it as just nothing, God. We take it as your word from you, from the throne of heaven, here on earth, to advance your kingdom, O oh God. And so, Lord, here we are, O oh God, and we ask, O oh God, that you would fall fresh upon us. God, we ask for more of your Holy Spirit in us right now, Lord. God, we need more of you and less of us. Father, release your anointing upon us, O oh God. Anoint us, O oh God, for such a time as this. Help us see, O oh God, that which we need to see, that which you've given us, that which you've placed around us, O oh Lord. And that those things, when we offer them up to you, Lord, your windows of blessing would be poured out upon each thing, O oh Lord. And we just give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise tonight, Lord. We thank you for what you're about to do this next year, God. We thank you for what you've done before, but what you're about to do, oh God. We have holy expectation, oh God. We thank you that even tonight you clothe us with more power and more of your glory, more of your presence, oh God. Lord, we just with up, uplifted hearts and uplifted hands, we just say, clothe us, oh God. Fill us, oh God. Empower us, oh God. Here we are, Lord God. Have your way in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Feel free to come forward for prayer.